everyone, this is Amy. Welcome to my channel. If you've watched my channel for a while, you probably know Monica. I first introduced her to you when she took her adult pre-bronze moves in the field. I also took a deep dive into Monica's adult bronze moves in the field test. If you missed any of those videos, there's a link in the description down below. Monica just took her first free skate test, the adult pre-bronze free skate, and she passed her test. Today, I thought it'd be helpful to many of you to go over her tests so that you know what to expect if you're preparing to take your own adult pre-bronze free skate test. Adult pre-bronze is the first free skating test in the adult track. These tests are designed to assist with the development of the skater. This is true of the adult track as well as the standard track. To test as an adult, you must be at least 21 years old. It can sometimes be confusing. You can compete as a young adult at 18. And in Learn to Skate, the adult track begins at age 15. But to test as an adult, no matter what discipline, you must be at least 21 years old before you can test. Now, before you can test your adult pre-bronze free skating, you must first have passed your adult pre-bronze moves in the field. Or if you're crossing over from the standard track, your pre-preliminary moves in the field. You can take the adult pre-bronze and pre-preliminary free skate tests in what we call in isolation, where you perform each element outside of a program. You can also perform these tests as a program without music, or you may perform it as a program with music. And I generally suggest that my skaters perform the test as a program with music. This is how Monica took her test, with the elements in a program with music. It's also helpful that you've passed your adult bronze moves in the field or preliminary moves if you're crossing over from the standard track, especially if you're competing and or testing your free skate test with music. Here's why. If you're competing or even just testing using a full program with or without music, Mastering the moves in adult bronze provides you with better skating skills that you can leverage when building your program. Having the skills you acquire from more advanced moves will make your skating appear smoother with continuous flow. Moves in the field is a system that allows one skill to build upon another. Moves in the field provides the building blocks for balance, use of the blade, control of the body, rotation or checking ability, body line to full extension, increasing speed and power, as well as accuracy of placement of the pattern. The purpose of the adult pre-bronze free skate test is to encourage beginning adult skaters to learn the fundamentals of free skating. No great deal of technical ability, carriage, or flow is expected. The candidate must show knowledge of the elements, fairly good edges, and some evidence of good form. While the expectations for the adult pre-bronze free skate do align with the standard track pre-preliminary free skate test, there are some differences. As specified in Rule 6561, the skater must successfully complete the following required elements either as isolated elements or in a program with or without music. Adult pre-bronze free skate requires two half or single jumps. In contrast, the pre-preliminary free skate test requires five jump elements. One must be a waltz jump or axle, and only two may be half jumps. Required jumps may be performed as solo jumps or as part of the permitted jump combinations or sequences but no jump element may count for more than one of the jump requirements. In the adult pre-bronze free skate, steps are only required if a program is performed. In that case, connecting steps throughout the program are required. However, with the pre-preliminary free skate test, a half ice step sequence is required. The spins are similar in the pre-bronze and pre-preliminary free skate tests. Both require two spins of a different character, one of which may be a two foot spin, a backward upright one foot spin is considered of a different character than a forward one foot upright spin. So both may be performed. Both spins may change feet and or positions. Suppose a skater performs a sit spin or a camel spin. In that case, the position must be recognizable but does not need to achieve a basic position as defined in rule 6103. 
The program duration is the same for both adult pre-bronze and pre-preliminary. One minute, 40 second maximum if a program is performed with music. If performed as a program, as you will see Monica do, extra elements may be added without penalty. Two different elements may be reskated if necessary. Program duration in excess of or inclusion of illegal elements don't receive a deduction, but judges are asked to make notes in the comments. Pre-bronze and pre-preliminary are both marked on a pass retry basis. However, you may also pass with honors. Marking is always relative to test level expectations and the passing average for each level. Judges will consider the difficulty and quality of your elements performed, the quality of your skating, and the quality of the program presentation relative to your test level and the expectation for the passing average when providing their marks for free skate tests. Now, Monica took this test virtually. Virtual testing was initially approved as a fixed term pandemic accommodation and is now a standard available option in the testing structure. Skaters can now choose in-person or virtual testing, whatever works best for their schedule or preferences. Monica is a mom to two teenage boys. One of them is a varsity hockey player. She is also a nurse practitioner and works full-time at a hospital, so her schedule is pretty busy. She somehow still does find time to practice her skating at least five hours a week, one hour of which is in a lesson. I'm honestly not sure how she finds this time. She's a really great role model for some of my younger skaters. Monica chose to take her test virtually because it was a better fit for her. Virtual tests are subject to the protocols as defined in the requirements within the technical notification. You must have met the prerequisites for the test by the date the test was skated. Each test must be executed in one continuous video taped shot without stopping the video. The person taking the video should stand at center ice near the boards on the judge's side with the camera higher up than the boards to capture all corners of the rink and attempt to reduce any obstructions. The skater should be framed head to toe in the center of the screen, and you should follow them during their performance. The test candidate must be clearly identifiable in the video and free from other skaters interfering with the test. No more than eight skaters may be on the ice when filming a virtual test. Restarts and reskates are not permitted for virtual testing. And that is because you can film a virtual test in its entirety as many times as you need to, as long as you do not modify or edit the video. However, if Monica had taken this test in person, she would have been given the opportunity to reskate up to two different elements if the judge had requested her to do so. All other test rules remain intact. A performance affidavit stating that the video is in its original format and has not been altered in any way must be signed by the test candidate. The test candidate's coach, the videographer, and the test proctor must accompany the video submission. Any video submitted that is found to have been edited or modified from its original format will invalidate the test. Videos must have been taken within 30 days of the submission deadline. I have some other tips in Monica's bronze moves in the field video. I won't go into all of that here, but if you're interested in learning more about virtual testing and the best way to do it, there's a link in the description down below. Okay, so with all that out of the way, let's get into Monica's test. As I mentioned earlier, Monica did skate this test with music. However, because this is YouTube, I may intentionally talk over the music or lower it when I edit this video so that my channel doesn't receive a copyright strike. The joys of YouTube, here we go.
Now, the judge didn't provide us with a lot of comments. They counted her waltz jump as the first jump element and marked it satisfactory. They counted her toe loop as her second jump and marked it satisfactory. Monica did have an additional jump, single sow cow. That was an extra added element because this is also her competition and show program. She was not penalized for adding an additional jump element. For her spins, the judge noted that Monica had the two required. One was a one foot. The other was a two foot. Both were satisfactory and the judge checked off her connecting steps and that they were satisfactory too. There were not any additional comments. So Monica passed the adult pre-bronze free skate test. I've said it before, but Monica has made significant progress and she should be very proud of herself for passing this test. Congratulations, Monica. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like and share it with somebody else that this video could help and just post it to your social media too. If you have any questions that I didn't address in this video, please leave me a comment. I always try to respond to all the comments. And remember, I post videos every week that can help you with your skating, fitness, nutrition, and live your best life. So if you like that kind of content, please click that subscribe button and ring the bell so that you never miss a video. This is Amy. Thank you for watching. Happy skating. I will see you real soon. Bye.